Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas from North, North Bremelie's family. family. Hi, welcome to worship at NBUC. Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas, NBUC. NBUC. Welcome, welcome to, to church. church. From our family to yours. Merry Christmas, NBUC. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul felt its worth a thrill Sweet hymns of joy in God. 
Good evening and Merry Christmas, and welcome to NBUC's Christmas Eve service. My name is Ali McGregor, and if this is your first time joining us tonight, welcome. Wherever you are in the world, we are so glad that you've joined us. If you want to stay connected to NBUC after the service, and we hope that you do, you can find us online at nbuc.ca and on Facebook and Instagram at NBUC Church. Again, we are so happy that you've joined us here tonight for Christmas Eve, and we're super excited to see what God will do with this service tonight. Yeah, absolutely. Welcome. Uh, Echo Alley's welcome. My name is Jim Christian, and uh, so looking forward to spending Christmas Eve with you this way. Uh, this service is one of my special ones. I love this service. It's it's kind of the chaos of Christmas is ending. We Everything is done, and anything that isn't done doesn't matter. But it's the chaos that Jesus was born into, the world, the broken world that he arrived in. And, and we've had a broken world this year. So it's just beautiful that now on Christmas Eve, we're able to sit, worship, have communion. And it just mirrors what happened uh, that special night when God arrived in Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. So we hope that you enjoy tonight and that your home is filled with the power of God tonight. Yeah, and I just want to echo what Jim was saying and just comment on how amazing it is that God entered into our imperfect broken world those many years ago as a little tiny baby. And the way that God showed his unconditional love for us by humbling himself, living among us, and experiencing everything that we experience. God can relate to all of our pain, our fear, our suffering um, on such a deep level. And it, it just goes to show how much God loves us. And that's what we're here to celebrate tonight is the hope that we find in Jesus. And as Jim mentioned, we will be celebrating communion tonight. So this is just a hint, get those sacraments ready, find a little bit of wine or juice, a little bit of bread, and uh, we hope that you will join us in celebrating communion later. Um, but before we jump into the service, we just wanna read some scripture that reflects on uh, what was happening in that manger so many years ago. So Jim and I will be reading from Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 35. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to the Galilean village of Nazareth to a virgin engaged to be married to a man descended from David. His name was Joseph, and the virgin's name was Mary. Upon entering, Gabriel greeted her. Good morning. You're beautiful with God's beauty beautiful inside and out. God be with you. She was so thoroughly shaken, wondering, what's behind a greeting like that? But the angel assured her, Mary, you have nothing to fear. God has a surprise for you. You will become pregnant and give birth to a son and call his name Jesus. He will be great. Be called son of the highest. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. He will rule Jacob's house forever. No end to his kingdom. Mary said to the angel, but how? I've never slept with a man. And the angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. The power of the highest hover over you. Therefore, the child you bring to birth will be called Holy Son of God.
About that time, Caesar Augustus ordered a census to be taken throughout the empire. This was the first census when Quirinius was governor of Syria. Everyone had to travel to his own ancestral hometown to be accounted for. So Joseph went from the Galilean town of Nazareth up to Bethlehem in Judah, David's town, for the census. As a descendant of David, he had to go there. He went with Mary, his fiance, who was pregnant. While they were there, the time came for her to give birth. She gave birth to her son, to a son, her firstborn. She wrapped him in a blanket and laid him in a manger because there was no room in the inn. Good evening. We've come into this time where we are going to be celebrating communion, the presence of God, Emmanuel, God with us. And so we turn once again to the story. The story of Jesus' birth is found in the Gospel according to Luke. At the very beginning of that story, we hear that there is a census, and the Emperor Augustus has ordered that everyone would return to their place of birth to be counted. And so Mary and Joseph, with Mary being nine months pregnant, have to leave Nazareth to go to Bethlehem, a journey of over 90 miles. How hard that would have been, for Mary especially, but for everyone trying to get back to their hometowns. 
we read in Luke's version of Jesus' birth, that when he came into the world, there was this choir of heavenly hosts singing. And this baby was born in a manger, a stable, because there had been no room for Mary or Joseph at an inn or even with family. And so she gives birth and she lays him in this manger. And then the story continues in Luke chapter 2. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people. To you in is born this day in the city of David, a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom God favors. on earth and mercy mild God and sinners reconciled joyful all ye nations rise join the triumph of the skies with angelic hosts proclaim Christ is born in Bethlehem sing glory to the newborn King. Glory to the King. Christ by highest heaven adored. Christ the everlasting Lord. Late in time Light and life to all he brings Risen with healing in his wings Mild he lays his glory
When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in a manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all of these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned to their field, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, just as it had been told to them. Mary pondered all these things in her heart. God, our prayer this night is that we too would ponder the amazing, wonderful gift of Jesus into our lives, into this world, into our hearts through his ongoing presence. You who gave yourself and give yourself so fully to us is what we remember and celebrate this Christmas Eve. You, Jesus, are Emmanuel, God with us. Amen. Over the skies of Bethlehem appeared a star While angels sang to lowly shepherds Three wise men seeking truth They traveled from afar Hoping to find the child from heaven Falling on their knees They bowed before the of peace I bring an offering of worship to my king no one on earth deserves the praises that I sing Jesus may you receive the honor that you're due oh Lord I bring an offering to you It's only by your blood, it's only through your mercy, Lord, I come. I bring an offering of worship to my King. No one on earth deserves the praises that I sing. Jesus, may you receive the honor that you're due. Offering to you. I bring an offering of worship to my King. No one on earth deserves the praises that I sing. Jesus, may you receive the honor that you're due. Oh Lord, I bring an offering to you. Oh Lord, I bring an offering to you. An offering to you. An offering. An offering to you. An offering. Oh. An offering to you. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. 
Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. Tonight, we celebrate the good news that God has brought us through Jesus, and that brings us joy. As we continue this celebration tonight, I invite you to sing with us, Joy to the World. Merry Christmas, everyone. It, it's great to be with you. I mean, I wish we could really be together physically, but we know that's not an option for tonight. So we are glad that we can be connected this way. I just want you to know we're, we're praying for you wherever you are and whatever's happening for you this evening. We are praying for you as we experience this good news of Christmas together tonight. We, uh, we sat around uh, as a worship team back a couple months ago, just reminiscing about some of the, the Christmases that we've had in the past around the church. And I got to tell you, I think because of this year in particular, because of COVID and this pandemic, because we, we knew it was going to be so very different, it was just so healthy to, to remember some of those memories of Christmas Eves in the past here at NBC. And it was a lot of fun, I got to tell you. We, we remember some things like this. Um, there was a time at the 11.30, yes, we used to have a 11.30 p.m. service that would take us over uh, into, the, into Christmas Day. But at one of those services, you may not be surprised to hear this if you know that I'm not so much an evening person, I'm more of a morning person. But I fell asleep during a prayer that I was leading 
from the front. It was just one of those just for a moment. But if, if you were there, you might remember that one. Some haven't let that one go and remind me of that often. Might re you remember maybe the, the young families service uh, where the little girl's hair caught on fire when we were sharing the light of Christ and lighting candles. So yeah, that was, uh, that was the last uh, year that we did that. After that, we introduced glow candles, or uh, sorry, glow sticks. <laughs> um, there was the, the year the fire alarm got pulled and some of, the, some of the firefighters from the local fire station 201 came over and after making sure everything was cool, they came up to me and, and I know them, they know me, and, and they said, Jamie, you didn't need to pull the fire alarm to get us here for Christmas Eve. <laughs> just, just one of the many Christmas Eve memories that we've had here around the church. I also remember the ornaments. We used to give away an ornament every, every Christmas. And I remember the, the CD, that, the, you know, the CDs that we used and put a Christmas message on. Just lots of ornaments I know around our house and many of your homes as well, I, I suspect. Thanks Dan Bertolini and the craft team and, and all the others who, who made that happen year after year for so long. I remember there being food in the kitchen and the choir and those who were leading the services who were here for the evening, just sharing some food and, and just spending some time together between services. Lots of, lots of great memories. And then, of course, there was the, the communion in the round, the first time we had communion and we had people come around tables and experience communion together. Just a, a very powerful transition for us. We're going to have communion tonight and we pray and hope that it's just as powerful, that we experience God in, in just as, as, a, as a powerful way as we have, as we've ex experienced this in the past here at NBUC. You might have your own memories of Christmas Eves in the past here at the church or even at home. Just in, encourage us to, to remember those, to celebrate those, to reflect on those. It's all part of living through this very different Christmas that we're having this year. Tonight, in this time of, of this message time, really would like to, to share the good news of this Christmas story. We've heard about it already this evening as we've worshiped together. But wanna, wanna zone in on this idea that God is with us and then talk a bit about communion and how that really can impact how we might experience communion this evening. You see, it is good news, this Christmas story. It's the good news of God choosing to come, of God caring that much. The good news of God taking on human flesh and joining us here on planet Earth, of not only entering in, but experiencing everything that we experience. God desiring to come that close. We celebrate that tonight. And that's good news. And that's the good news in this very short passage from Matthew chapter 1, verses 22 to 23 that I'd love to share with you this evening. It says here, starting in verse 22, all this took place, all this meaning the birth of Christ, all this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Friends, that is the good news at the core, at the heart of it. That is the good news of the Christmas story, that God is with us. This is all over this Christmas story. It's the best news that they could have received then, and it's the best news I think that we could receive even now, especially now, through this very complex and challenging time that we're living in. This good news that God is with us. When you think about the Christmas story, it was all over the Christmas story. Mary has a visit from an angel and she's offered this assignment to, to give birth to the Son of God. And it says the Holy Spirit came upon her and enabled her to say yes. God was with her, gave her all that she needed to take on that assignment. Joseph, when you think about this, this, the realities for Joseph, what a, what, a, what a challenging situation. The questions that he would have had, the doubts that he might have had, and yet somehow God is with him as well, enables him to enter into this journey in spite of those doubts and questions. For some of us tonight, maybe we're praying for God to help us do that very same thing. And then there's the shepherds. I, I love the story of the shepherds that Debbie Johnson read to us this evening. They're out in the field doing their job. And the angels show up and say this incredible message. We bring you good news of great joy that is for all people. And they are so, so awed by this experience, this profound experience that they have of God's presence, that they're amazed and they go off and they meet this Jesus and they can't help but sharing this good news with others. Maybe some of us, that's how we're feeling tonight, even in the midst of this this good news of God's coming 
is maybe even more significant this year than ever before. And like the shepherds, we're just so grateful for that and hungry to share that with others. Maybe some of us yearn an experience like that tonight. Our prayer is that you would have that, that we would experience God with us. It was good news then. God with us, God coming among them. But it wasn't just something that happened over 2,000 years ago. It's something that is happening here, now, tonight. This good news that God is with us and that promise as we live through this pandemic, that promise is so important for us. It means that we are not alone. And so whatever it is that you're facing this evening, wherever you are, whether you're with family, whether you're on your own, to know that you are not alone, that God is with you wherever you're at and whatever is happening. That's the promise of this story, this good news. Maybe it means for some of us, as we worry about the future, as we wonder, as we, as we have fears about the uncertainties of what the future might be, to know that God is here, that God has already gone before us, that God has already entered into all of that, and that we could rest in that tonight. God is, God is with us. For some of us, it may be that love of God that we've heard about. But tonight, to receive that, to be open to that, to understand and recognize that God loves us so much, this world so much, each of us so much, that God chose to come and be born among us and join us in this life here on earth. For some of us, it may be this incredible significance, reality, that God has entered into the pain of this world as we experience brokenness, broken relationships, loss of loved ones, mental health, depression, anxiety, all realities that could, be, could leave us in a very painful place, especially through Christmas as everything is, 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 just, is just magnified. To know that God has come, is with us in the midst of that pain and will walk through it with us, will lead us through, will love us through. It also means this incredible promise that as we look around the world tonight and we recognize that the world isn't right, that there are things like poverty and environmental issues, racial justice as we've gone through that in such a significant way that this year, all of those issues, that there are things that aren't right, but God knows, God cares, and part of tonight's promise is that God will continue to come and make those things right that God is already rallying the troops, people like you and me, even to be a part of that. All of that is part of this message tonight, this message of good news, that God is with us and with this existence that we're in here on earth. Good news, God with us. As we move into some time to celebrate communion this evening, our hope and our prayer is that all of this would be part of what we'll experience. Communion was a meal that Jesus celebrated. He celebrated this meal with his disciples. The Apostle Paul, he talks about this in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, where he writes, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. This is something that Jesus did, Paul is saying. And so we can do it as well. And we can do it tonight as well. The Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed, he took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me, in remembrance of God coming in Jesus and giving all for us, his life for us. And then he finishes it off in verse 26. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The Lord's death, the Lord's love, the Lord's hope, God's hope, good news for the world. We proclaim that as we celebrate communion tonight. When Jesus says, do this in remembrance of me, he is referring to a, an ancient practice that came out of his Jewish tradition. You see, Jesus would have celebrated the Passover. And so to do this in remembrance of me is to do this in remembrance of all that God has done. 
the Passover celebrating God delivering the Israelites from slavery in Egypt to the promised land. We, we are living in a time where we are waiting to be delivered, in this case from a pandemic. And so we can also remember God's faithfulness, the way that God has been faithful through these last number of months, this year, that's a year like none of us have probably ever experienced before. And yet we continue to hear stories of the ways that God has risen up and blessed people even in the midst of that. Tonight, we remember that as part of this meal, to remember God's faithfulness. I was, I was reminded recently that when we talk about this being unprecedented times, that maybe it's not, yes, it's unprecedented for us. Most of us have never experienced anything like this and hopefully we never will again. But it's not unprecedented. When you look at our history, when you look at the world, when you look at scripture, things like this happened before. And we can remember God's faithfulness then to see people through because that is what's happening now. And it is what will happen again. All that part of this communion meal is we remember God's faithfulness. How has God been faithful to you? The communion time this time, it's also about experiencing God in the present, in the moment, right now. That's at the heart of the story. God has come, is here even now as we celebrate this meal. Jesus said over and over again, the kingdom of God is here. In fact, the kingdom of God is within us, Jesus said. And so tonight, we, we pray that as we experience this meal, that we would experience God in this moment, right here, right now, with us, with you, right where you are, that we can have that experience of God and God's love in this communion meal this evening, in the present. And there's also a piece of this, this meal, this communion time, that is about preparing us for the future, about God fueling us, filling us for what is still to come. That was all part of what Jesus did with his disciples. He was enabling them, empowering them, preparing them for what was to come, for them to live out this movement that he had started. And they had no idea what it was going to look like, but that they would be prepared and that they would be given all that they need to live into that. Aren't we in a very similar situation now? There are, there's so much uncertainty. We, we do not know how long this will last. We don't know what life is going to look like really. And yet tonight, as we celebrate the Christmas story, God with us, God filling us, preparing us as we receive this communion this evening. We can trust that God is giving us all that we need for whatever is to come, preparing us for all of that. And so God is with us, with you tonight. As we think about the past, as we experience this moment now in the present, and certainly as we live into the future, whatever that might be. Friends, may we trust in that and be open to receiving that as we celebrate this communion meal tonight. Let us pray. Oh God, we thank you for the good news of Christmas, for the joy that you have come to bring on an evening like this, especially at a time like this, as we live through this pandemic. And so we say, come, Holy Spirit, come. May we open up to your presence as we celebrate communion this evening. May you come and meet us where we are. Those who are living in pain, those who are struggling, those who are feeling alone tonight, especially that you would come, Holy Spirit, come and fill them with your love. As we look around at this world, <laughs> that we would be assured that you didn't just come a long time ago, but you are coming now, today, this evening, that you are rallying your hope to bring justice, <laughs> to make things right. And tonight reminds us of that promise that you continue to be committed to 
and invite us to live into as well. Come, Holy Spirit, come. May we be filled and fueled by this good news of your presence and your love for us and for all people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We are so excited to be able to share communion with you this Christmas Eve. And I hope that you feel that this is a meal that you can come to. Christmas, Christ coming, Christ came for all of us. And so this table, your table at home, it is open for all to come to, to share in this communion meal, to share in this good news that Jamie's been talking about. And I hope you feel that that is good news for you as well. It is good news for all. And together as a family, family in Christ, we are going to share that meal together. So you are invited to come and share in this communion meal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one of our core values at NBUC is to be radically inclusive. And, and we would hope that tonight and night, especially as Jesus came for all, um, that we all would would be open and 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 uh, that this is a meal for everyone to come and receive this love of Christ, this love of God that we celebrate tonight by the power of the Holy Spirit. So let us come and celebrate communion. We invite you to get your elements if you haven't done so already. Um, and as we said throughout uh, COVID, you could use whatever you have around, whatever works for you, uh, bread, juice, crackers, chocolate milk, whatever is just fine. And we recognize tonight um, that one of the ways we can be connected is by sharing some of these pictures of us having communion at home. And so if you want to share a picture of your communion elements or you and your family having communion uh, this evening, you can do that on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and you can hashtag NBUC Christmas communion. That's hashtag NBUC Christmas communion. And it may be a way for us to connect and feel like we're together tonight, because we certainly are, again, by the power of the Holy Spirit. So just before we share in the meal, let us have a word of prayer and prepare our hearts. Loving God, we come to your table this evening, and we imagine and realize again your great desire to to show yourselves to us, to know you, to experience your love. So we want to open ourselves up right now, prepare ourselves for receiving this love in this meal tonight, particularly Christmas Eve. And so we pause for a moment just to prepare and ponder this love that we are going to experience in the communion meal. And we also want to come to you with the words that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, Father who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As we read earlier, on the night when Jesus celebrated this meal with his friends, with his followers, with his disciples, people like you and me, he took the bread and he broke it and gave thanks for it and said to all those who were gathered, as you eat of this bread, do so in remembrance of me, of all that I've done for you, of God's faithfulness, God's love for you and for this world. In the same way, he took the cup and gave thanks for it as well and said, as you drink of this cup, Drink of the new covenant, the new life, the new opportunity that I've come. So now I invite you to take your bread. And if you are together with others in your home tonight, perhaps you could share the bread around, 
offer it. Someone could offer it to them. If you are on your own, take that bread and know that it has been shared with you through our communion meal that we are doing at the same time, that this is the body of Christ, the bread that sustains us. And as we receive it, as we eat of it, we are taking in that love, that bread of life. So may we eat together. And now we invite you to take your cup, whatever is in your cup this evening, as we, as we celebrate Christmas, the coming of our Savior, the Messiah, Jesus. And as we do, as we drink of this cup, the cup that he invites us to drink of, know that we, we don't drink it alone, we drink it together, connected with each other, but also with the God who continues to come and breathe and bring new life for you and for me and for this world. Let us drink of this cup of new life, God's new life for us that we celebrate this Christmas. Let us pray. Oh God, again, we thank you and praise you for the gift of Christmas, of your coming, and we celebrate that, all of that, in this communion meal. May it sustain us, fill us, fuel us. May we know your love for, for us, and may it, may it deepen our love for one another, for your reconciling, healing work of your Holy Spirit as we celebrate this meal, your presence, here tonight together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And at this point in our in our service, we would love to light candles together. And so if you don't have a candle around, we would invite you to, to find one now and love to have people participating in the candle lighting as we close off our Christmas Eve service here tonight. <laughs> And uh, it's, it's interesting, as, as we were saying earlier, that we haven't lit candles on a Christmas Eve for several years because of an incident that happened a number of years so ago. Be so, yeah, so be careful. <laughs> Absolutely be careful. And, and um, we're, we're glad that where we are, where you are, that we can light a candle this evening. This light reminds us of the light of the world, of Jesus, who came and comes tonight. And we don't only celebrate the gift of his birth, but also his life, his teaching, his death, his resurrection. All of that is part of what we celebrate tonight because it continues all of that to bring light and redemption to this world. In John 1, 5, Jesus said, there is a light that shines in the darkness and the darkness cannot put it out. And so we light that light tonight, this light that has been given to you, for you for all of us, but this light that also is meant to live within us, that we would bring that light and be that light to a darkened world. What an important message for us to celebrate tonight. What good news is in, continues to be in that message, the light of the world. May it be with you and flow through you, the light of Christ. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, round yon virgin mother and child, holy infant so Sleep in heaven 
Let us pray. Loving God, in this silent night, in this silence, as we draw close to you, may you draw close to us. We give you thanks for the time of communion with you, where where you filled us. We give you thanks for all that you have done this night, coming amongst us in the birth of Jesus. And then we give you thanks for the life and the lessons and the teachings of Jesus as he walked this world. And then the ultimate gift of the cross and then the surprising gift of the resurrection. So we give you thanks. We give you the praise for loving us so much to do all of that for us. So we pray that your Holy Spirit will fill us each and every day to show your love, your hope in this broken world to help your kingdom come. Thank you. We praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So as we close tonight, we just want to thank you again so much for joining us here for our Christmas Eve service. And wherever you are in the world, we're just so grateful that that you're here with us. And we hope that this service has been a blessing to you. And we just want to remind you that we will be back on Sunday um, for online church at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. And we're launching a new series called Help. And it's all about um, leaning into scripture, leaning into God for support during those really troubling, tumultuous, scary times. And I think as we look ahead to 2021 and we see that 
COVID-19 is not going anywhere. Um, a lot of the, the struggles and challenges that we're facing in our everyday lives, they're, they're still here. So who can we turn to? We can turn to God. So uh, really looking forward to that series. So again, join us online on Sunday at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. at nbuc.ca. It's going to be a great service, great series. And, um, you know, maybe you want a little bit more. Um, Alpha will be starting up in January again. Alpha is an amazing online experience where you can explore even further uh, a, a life following Jesus and what that means and what it doesn't mean and just to get to meet some people and and ask questions that everybody has. What's the meaning of life? And all the, explore those. No pressure. Just come and explore. There's a sign up page on our website. You can sign up and uh, we would hope if that's where you are that you would come and come and see. Come and see at Alpha. Yeah, and I just I just want to say from personal experience that the Alpha course uh, was really transformational for me. It was one of the first ways that I got connected to the amazing community here at NBUC. So if it's something that you're curious about, if you have questions about what it means to be a Christian, who is this Jesus guy? Um, like Jim said, it's, it's a safe place to ask those questions. And it's also just a really wonderful way to meet people and to make those connections and um, build that, that strong, loving community. And I think right now, given the state of our world, uh, community is something that we could all use a lot more of. So I just really encourage you to, to check out Alpha. It's awesome. Um, and I also want to mention that tomorrow uh, we are doing some outreach in the community. So if you want to be an active participant in showing God's love to your neighbors, to first responders, to medical workers, to the environment, um, visit our website and uh, click on outreach to sign up and learn more. Yeah, and, and maybe it's too late for you to do something official with the outreach that we're running, but just uh, show show God's love tomorrow by maybe dropping in a card or a, a treat to a neighbor that's at home, or if you're out for a walk, making you know dedicating yourself to saying hi to everyone you meet and and just showing this love that you've experienced tonight uh, to them tomorrow and beyond. And another way of showing that love is by helping resource the ministries here. Uh, it takes it takes resourcing to do all that happens at NBUC. So you can go on our website. There's a giving button if you're if you feel th like you would like to give. Please give, and uh, we look forward to the year ahead. I would like to turn it over to Jamie and Katrina now for the closing prayer. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Friends, thanks so much for being with us uh, tonight. Merry Christmas to you and your family. We just wanted to close with a blessing, so let us receive God's blessing as we end our service here this evening. May God, the one who chose to come, whose love is so great for each of us in this world, Jesus Christ, who continues to bring new life and hope, and the Holy Spirit, who is our friend and our guide, that healing presence, be with us as we go from here. Amen. Amen.